Arches are efficient structural forms that resist loads primarily by axial compression. In practice, pure axial compression without moment cannot exist due to imperfections and eccentricities, support spreading, and unsymmetrical loading. Therefore, vertically curved members in building structures are designed for combined axial compression and in-plane flexural loads. For shorter distances that are optimally spanned by flexural members, vertically curved beams are often used for aesthetic effect. This video discusses the behavior and strength of arches and beams loaded in the plane of curvature. The design method uses AISC specification equations for straight members to design curved members subjected to axial compression and in-plane flexure. This method will allow the use of existing software for curved member design by modifying effective length factors and lateral torsional buckling modification factors to account for the curvature. A funicular shape is the geometry resulting exclusively in axial loads in a member when subjected to a particular load system. The funicular tension member shown takes the shape of a weightless cable under load. The funicular arc under the same load system is symmetrical about a horizontal plane to the funicular cable. A funicular arc has the shape of the moment diagram of a straight beam of identical span and loads. This results in a polygon for the system of concentrated forces. And a parabola for the uniform load where the arc geometry deviates from the funicular geometry. The moment and shear at any point in a member can be calculated using the offset of the two curves as shown for this curved member under a single point load. At the only location where the curved member meets the funicular polygon, the moment is zero. For other locations on the arc, the moment is the product of the axial load in the funicular member and the offset distance between the funicular curve and the arc member. Arc geometry is often described using the rise to span ratio H over LS, where H is the arc rise and LS is the arc span. Rise to span ratios between 1 over 6 and 1 over 5 are the most efficient structurally. For arced roof structures supported at the floor level, rise to span ratios between 1 over 4 and 1 over 3 provide the most economical compromise between structural efficiency and usable enclosed area. For a circular arc with a radial uniform load Q along the arc, the axial compression load is the distributed load Q multiplied by the radius of the arc. For a uniformly loaded parabolic arc as shown, the maximum axial load which occurs at the supports is calculated as follows, where W is the magnitude of the applied uniform load. Under compression, the arc member shortens causing a vertical deflection at the apex. For in-plane deflection, arc behavior is similar to that of a beam column. Second-order deflections can usually be estimated by amplifying the first-order deflection according to the following equation, where P sub EI is the elastic in-plane critical buckling load, delta 1 is the first-order deflection, and delta 2 is the second-order deflection. Where deflections are significant, a second-order analysis with geometric nonlinearities, including the effect of member axial shortening, is required to properly determine the second-order effects. Because arc loads are carried primarily by compression, the in-plane strength is dependent on the support stiffness. Support spreading significantly reduces the strength, causing large vertical deflections at the apex, potentially leading to collapse. In this case, the support flexibility must be included in the structural analysis model, and the curved member will likely behave similar to a beam with a relatively low compression force. Completely rigid supports are difficult to obtain in practice, 
and additional members are often required to provide support stiffness. In this figure, the horizontal member acts as a tension tie, preventing arc spreading. However, these ties often interfere with the functionality and aesthetic quality of the structure. In this figure, a vertical truss system designed to resist the horizontal thrust is shown. If the first order deflection, delta 1, calculated using factored loads for LRFD is less than H over 40, a first order analysis is sufficiently accurate. This criterion assumes the analysis includes the effect of support flexibility. For arcs with rise to span ratio less than 0.1, accurate modeling of support stiffness and second order effects is critical. Arcs must be designed to prevent snap through buckling, which is a type of in plane instability that is sensitive to second order effects and support spreading. Snap through buckling can occur in a symmetric mode as shown or an asymmetric mode. Because the snap through limit state is difficult to predict, arcs are preferably proportioned so that any in plane instability will be limited by the asymmetric buckling modes for pin supported arcs and the fixed supported arcs. Snap through buckling can be prevented by ensuring the span slenderness LS over RI exceeds a minimum critical value where LS is the span distance and RI is the in plane radius of gyration. Minimum span slenderness values LS over RI critical for pinned and fixed end conditions and rise to span ratios H over LS between 0.1 and 0.2 are listed in this table. Generally, snap through buckling is not critical for arcs with rigid supports and rise to span ratios greater than 0.2. When snap through buckling is prevented, arcs buckle in the asymmetric modes for pinned and fixed arcs. These buckling modes are less sensitive to second order effects and support spreading. The buckling strength can be predicted using the flexural buckling provisions of AISC specification chapter E, with modified effective length factors that consider the effect of curvature. Although the axial load can vary along the arc, the arc member can be designed as a straight column with a uniform axial load throughout its length equal to the maximum load at any section within the arc. The following table lists the appropriate effective length factors for use with the flexural buckling provisions in AISC specification chapter E. In the specification equations, the developed length of the arc L sub D must be used instead of the straight member unbraced length L. The effective length factors in the table are valid when H over LS is greater than 0.2 or when H over LS is between 0.1 and 0.2, and the minimum span slenderness values shown in the previous table are satisfied. The elastic in-plane critical buckling load is evaluated as follows, where E is the elastic modulus, I sub I is the moment of inertia about the axis of curvature, and K is the effective length factor from the table previously shown. Under axial compression, the arc can potentially buckle out of plane, where the buckled shape is characterized by out of plane translation and twisting. Freestanding arcs, which are braced only at the ends, rely on end rotational restraints to provide out of plane stability and resistance to out of plane loads. In practice, most arcs are braced against out-of-plane translation by continuous or discrete bracing systems. In the case of discrete braces, each segment can buckle between brace points. The buckling strength is dependent on the developed length along the arc between braces L sub dB. Although the member buckles in flexural torsional mode, the flexural buckling provisions in AISC specification chapter E can be used with an effective length factor modified to account for torsional effects. In the AISC specification equation, the developed length between brace points LDB 
must be used instead of the straight member unbrace length L. The elastic out of plane critical buckling load is calculated in the following equation where I sub O is the moment of inertia perpendicular to the plane of curvature and KO is the effective length factor for out of plane buckling. For circular arcs formed of doubly symmetric shapes the effective length factor is found as follows where C sub O can found with the following equation and G is the shear modulus, J is the torsional constant CW is the warping constant and theta B is the subtended angle between braces in radians. For parabolic arcs with doubly symmetric shapes and HB over LSB less than or equal to 0.2, the buckling strength is similar to that of a circular arc. Length factor can be calculated using the same equation with an equivalent angle between braces according to this equation where HB is the rise dimension between the brace points and the apex of the arc segment and LSB is the span length or cord length between out of plane bracings. Because members with high J over IO ratios provide the most efficient out of plane buckling resistance, closed sections should be considered when this limit state controls the design. For hollow steel section shapes with theta B less than or equal to 45 degrees or HB over LSB less than or equal to 0.1, a conservative value for the effective length factor is KO equals 1.3. In the next video, we will show the strength of curved members loaded in the plane of curvature in flexure as well as combined axial and flexural forces. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.